Praise the Lord. I greet you viewers all over the world. I appreciate you for following the series of prophecy towards the new Nigeria. But today there is a paradigm shift in the prophecy. We are going to look at next year. The prophecy for next year. The 2024 prophecy for Nigeria and for the world. The pattern of our prophecy will be to ensure that we pray towards next year and achieve what God wants us to achieve, to go far in life and achieve destiny. 2024 prophecy. 2024 prophecy. We are going to start this 2024 prophecy by looking back from the figure of the throne of presidency because it's going to affect 2024 prophecy the throne of the presidency is a throne established by the manipulation of men it is instituted by the powers of darkness this manipulation of men and powers of darkness institute that throne and the figure is a personality who knows how to get the people averagely or relatively nigeria is an idolatrous nation when I say idolatrous nation, it does not mean that the majority of the people serve idol. No, we love certain idol, and the idol is money and mundane things. Because of this money and mundane things, that is why we are where we are. The figure in the presidency is a giver and he gives those things and he is able to have his way through and in may 29 we saw the nakedness of nigeria this nakedness is glaring i told you that those that are following bad and those opposing the new nigeria are already in the red sea and this Red Sea experience, we have seen it. If we go further, I said I saw a beast behind that throne. And this beast is an agent of darkness who has a plate, a kind of bowl, and the blood was dropping on it. And I commanded to pierce himself. I used a language that shook yourself and it pierced itself and the blood that came out of that agent of darkness he drank it himself and later I saw it cut into two and the nation experienced fertile land <coughs> and I saw <coughs> plants growing excuse me I saw plants growing the new Nigeria will come, but the delay is due to our way of life, our love for mundane things, our love for money. And this has led us to where we are now. The blood that you saw is a symbol of the suffering of Nigeria, the sweat and the hardship, the poverty, the inflation, rise in price. This hardship is going to happen in 2024. In 2024, expect hardship. 
I don't want to give you a prophecy of faith alone. I will boost your faith, but I will tell you what is coming. Bible says, a wise man foreseeth evil and avoid it. 2024, the number one thing you need to, be, to know is that hardship is coming. Suffering is coming. The Lord told me that if birth gets in, that is funeral. This funeral is funeral to the economy of Nigeria, funeral to the political stand, funeral to the democracy. Democracy has been buried, economy buried. You are going to experience hardship in 2024. Hardship is coming. My brother, my sister, the truth should be said because the agent of darkness hijacked the power and stood in a seat that does not belong to him. In the eyes of God, this is permissive will. And this permissive will has devastating effects because they are already in the Red Sea. You will see hardship. Nigerians are in the wilderness. We are going to experience hardship. We are going to experience wilderness experience, dryness. We are going to experience inflation. We are going to experience suffering, hardship. Dollar is going to rise to about $2,000. I got the message. It's going to rise. Dollar is going to rise. The prices of commodity is going to rise. So, if you can save, save a little out of the little you have. If you have 10,000 Naira, do not eat all the 10,000 Naira in this December. Save at least 2,000. If you have 100,000, save at least 10,000. If you have a million, save at least 100,000. Because I see hardship coming in 2024. I heard it vividly. Suffering is coming 2024. But our God is a God of grace. Our God is a God of grace. In the midst of famine, He will bless His people. If you can obey God and live a righteous life, you will not only survive, you will flourish in this hardship. I tell you the truth, if you can believe God, walk in His way, walk in righteousness, and do His will, you will not only survive, you will flourish in this hardship. But of a truth, hardship is coming. Suffering is coming. Nigeria is going to experience suffering. We went through eight years of suffering. That was the journey of Nebuchadnezzar. The, the figure on the throne is a symbolic Nebuchadnezzar. And Nigeria went through a lot of pain. We were like men in a strange land. Nigeria were like country in a strange land. This next year, you are going to see hardship and suffering until Cyrus come. Hardship, suffering will continue until Cyrus come. So next year, prepare yourself to face the challenges of hardship, economic hardship, suffering, inflation, poverty, and many others. Prepare your mind, prepare yourself, be prepared so that you can overcome. I'm sure we have all heard everything Pastor Kingsley have to say concerning our beloved country Nigeria. What I will ask us to do right now is that we should do well to pray for Nigeria. You have heard everything he said. He has all done that we should be prepared. A lot to be happening, a lot to be coming, a lot to be going on in Nigeria in this year 2024. He is not the first pastor to say it. He is not the first man of God to say it. Different men of God have been giving prophecies about things that is going to be happening in this year 2024. The funny thing is that the year has not even gone half. We are still in March, but you see, if you look at the things that are already unfolding, 
it just makes you wonder like what will be happening in the next uh, few months we have not even gone half a look at the things that have been happening look at the hardship look at the suffering look at how dollar have risen a lot is just happening things are just scattered in the country but what can we do all we can just do is to trust god the bible says we should trust in the lord with all our heart and we should not lean on our own understanding some may trust in chariots others and horses but the bible says we should trust only in the name of the lord let us do it to keep our trust in god to put our trust in god and he will always see us through he will always guide us and take care of us and sustain us that is the only advice i can give you because if i ask you right now to put your trust in this government to trust in this government i am lying to you nigeria politicians cannot be trusted none of them as i'm here right now i don't trust any nigeria politician if they ask me to stay i will run if they ask me to run i will stay that is how they are you are not supposed to trust nigeria politicians everything they have been saying they will do they will do they will do all those things are just what we call pipe dreams all those things they are just pipe dreams that is what they are just selling to you there is no hope as long as these politicians are still in power as long as these politicians are there there is no hope for nigeria the only thing that i can ask us to do is that we should pray it is only God that can give us hope for the future and give us a man that can at least make us know that there is still hope. But as long as Tinibu and his people are still in power, forget it. There is nothing. I'm, I'm telling you, there is nothing Nigerians can do at the moment to save themselves unless God comes to save them. Because Tinibu and his people, they are just head bent on destroying Nigeria, on frustrating Nigerians, on making sure that Nigerians go through the different kind of hardship. It is just too bad. I don't even know what to say. Sometimes eh, I will sit and I will be watching the news, I will be listening to the things happening in Nigeria. In one country, in just three months, you will be shocked about the number of things that have already happened. I will just look at the things happening in the country I will be wondering, where did we get it wrong? Is it that Nigeria is a cost nation? Is it that God has placed a cost upon our country, Nigeria? Because sometimes you don't even understand some of the news you hear. Eh? It is, you don't know that you should cry or you should laugh. Some of them are just funny. Some of them are funny but very serious. You hear different, different things. Just In just three months, we are hearing that a, a, a senator is resigning. I mean, they are sacking a senator because he, he, he was questioning them about the billions of Naira that they, they are stealing. It is too bad. You, you look at things like that, you don't just know what to say. How can in three months, senators are thinking about billions of Naira to steal when people are, are suffering in the country, when there is serious hardship in the land? My God. I don't know how we got here and I don't I don't know why our senators and our politicians don't have what to call conscience. Because if they have conscience, the money they have been stealing for years, the money they have been stealing ever since they became they, be, they became politicians, is it not enough for them? Can they decide at least due to what is happening in the country right now, let us do the right thing for the sake of the masses. People are dying, people are crying, people are losing their jobs, people are losing their businesses, people are losing their lives. You just look at the things like this, it will just want to frustrate you. Especially if you have traveled that before. Look at the way people from other countries, countries we are better than no, that Nigeria is better than the way they are treating us. Sometimes they'll be treating us as if we are criminals, we are we are thieves because we are in that country due to the nonsense happening in Nigeria. I'm telling you, if Nigeria was in order, there are some countries our people will not go to. But our people don't have a choice because it is better you go out there and face the unknown than you face what is happening in the country at the moment. The country right now is messed up. The country is just totally messed up. You don't know where to go. You don't know who you are dodging. Whether you are dodging police or full and harassment or army or you, you don't know what you are dodging. You will be just be going on your own like this, minding your business. Problem will come and meet you. That is how the country is designed. That is how the country is. Sometimes I don't look at the country like this. I say, man, is this the country where our children are going to live? Where is the future? Where is the hope for the children? You look at all this thing like this. You, you just want to shed tears. You just want to cry because I have weighed it. I have checked it. I don't even know where the problem is coming from. I don't know where the problem is coming from. You cannot say this is the problem. 
Why can't the politician at least just do something? Just do something. For now, they are the only people that I know that if they decide that Nigeria is going to be better today, Nigeria is going to be better. Because you look at Nigeria as a country, you ask yourself, why is it that we don't have at least one world-class hospital? How many leaders are passengers they have come and gone? Look at how many leaders have, go, have, like, have uh, uh, ruled Nigeria. None of them thought about building a world-class hospital so that our leaders can stop traveling outside the country to go, to go and take treatment. None of them are thinking about it. None of them have even sat down and said, oh, the education system is too porous, let me fix it. None of them are said, okay, let me give these people steady electricity. It is too bad. Look at what Governor Alex Oti is doing in Abia State. Just, just look at what, what he's doing. Excellent job. He tells you that any politician that comes up, that comes into power and say, I want to make a change, they can make a change. But what is worrying them is greed. Instead of they will make that change, they will rather prefer to steal and milk the country dry. A country like Nigeria with massive potential, we have everything it takes to become like one of the greatest nations in the world. But we are struggling for for like basic amenities. The things that government are supposed to be providing for us, we are praying for it. It is just too bad. I was telling somebody a few, few, few months ago that Nigeria is an underdeveloped country. Anytime I say it, people don't really understand it because they think that development is when they are seeing a, a total building. They think that development is when they are seeing people buying nice, nice cars. Any country that lacks basic social amenities, that country is an underdeveloped country. A country that don't have electricity, a country that, don't, that, that cannot boast of solid, solid security, and you call that one a developed country, it's a lie. A country that the minimum wage is, it, 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 like, is less than 40,000 naira, you call that a developed country. Change that money to dollar you will know that people are suffering and slaving themselves away in Nigeria and the government are doing nothing about it. You call that a developed country. A country where a senator, an ordinary senator, we have cars that billionaires are the people that are supposed to be able to afford them. A public servant. And they are not ashamed, they are not scared to flaunt it to show the cars. Example, Dino Menaye, you see him showing like different cars that are worth millions of naira. Ask them what they are doing. Most of them don't have job. Their job is Nigeria. Their job is to steal from us. It is too bad. You look at things like this, you just want to cry. But who are you going to run to? Who are you going to talk to? You go to the court, they own the court. They own all the lawyers there. Who, what, what can you say? You come out to protest, they kill you. What can you do in the country again? You are dodging politicians, you are dodging Fulani Hesmen, you are dodging, dodging Boko Haram, you are dodging bandits, you are dodging this, you are dodging that. The country is not safe. You cannot sleep with your two eyes closed. It's only in Nigeria that when you are walking and you hear, boom, everybody will take off. Because no safety, nothing, no security. You cannot trust the government, you cannot even trust the police, people that are supposed to be protecting life and properties. They are even a threat. People even fear police more than armed robbers. Yes, it is bad. Let us do what to please. Pray for our country. We have heard everything Pastor Kinsley have said. The only thing we can do is prayer. Prayer is the only thing we can do so that God can intervene and help save us from the hands of these politicians. Let us do what to pray. Let us pray. Let us pray. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please do have to subscribe to the channel, turn on your notification bell so whenever I post another video, you'll be notified. If you're a returning subscriber, I want to say thank you to you. Thank you for always stopping by to watch our video. We appreciate the support you have been giving us on this channel. May God bless you, may God reward you, may God supply you as you have been supporting us on this channel. Please don't forget to share the video on our social media platform, share with your friends and loved ones so they will know what God has said concerning our nation, Nigeria. And don't forget to like the video and drop a comment so YouTube can continue to recommend this video to more people. God bless you as you do so. I will see you in the next video. You are blessed.